Today, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any 2D logo into a 3D logo, super fast, easy, beginner friendly. Let's get to it. So here we are in Blender, I'm using version 3.3.1. And go ahead and let's press one on keyboard. If you don't have that, simply click on the X S till it goes to minus Y, click on default cube, X and delete. All right, so now in order for us to create this 3D icon logo, we need to have an SVG. So in order to do that, first off, you do need to make sure you have this add-on. So click on Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then go up here and just simply type SVG. Make sure you have this Import Export Scalable Vector Graphics. This one right here, click it. And then when you go and press F4 on your computer, you will see these options. And you want to go to Import, and then you want to simply click on the option which says Scalable Vector Graphics SVG. So now you're probably wondering, what if I don't have an SVG? How can I continue? Well, let me show you a website where you can get an SVG that I'm using. So let me show you real quick. And that is called pixabay.com. Simply type that in, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. Now you might need to make an account, but literally just sign up with email, easy. And then on this website, they actually have different options. But when you click on this option, go and make sure you switch from images to vector graphics and then type whatever you want. So I type French fries. And now you can see all of these are essentially SVGs, right? So basically just scroll until you see one that you like. And the one that I selected is simply right here. So I click on it and then you just do free download and then switch it to uh, SVG vector graphic and then download that. And now you have yourself an SVG to work with. So now once you have that or using your own, go and click on it now and then simply upload this. So here I just clicked it and it's basically, one is all essentially black, which is not ideal, but if you happen to be the unlucky bunch, then that's easy fix, don't worry. And if you are the lucky one that has it already colored, then easier for you. But basically what we need to do is simply click here and let's change this material. So right off the bat, it says SVG matte. So for this basic SVG, it's very, very basic, two colors. So here I can just simply hit minus new, add a new material, just make it a little red real quick, and then pretty much tab into edit mode, A to select all of it, and then just assign. So now if we go to material preview, you can see it like this. And now since these are essentially the French fries and they're using this um, SVG matte color already, and it's only one color, then I can just simply go here and change this to a yellow. And basically, for simplicity's sake, it pretty much does what I need. However, if you have multiple colors, then you need to minus it again like I did earlier, and then add a new a material just like I showed in the first for the red one. But for just simplicity, visual sake, here we go. And the more complex your SVG is with shadows, it might have these little overlaps and I'll show you one way to get rid of it. Typically, you could delete those or last, but since this is only two, essentially red and yellow, I'm gonna make the red part a little thicker so that way it's it, it basically covers that little overlap looking thing right here. So now simply select everything. And then zoom out a little bit because I wanna make this a little bigger. Press S to scale it and then just go ahead and scale. And scale it up to the size you think I'll do about this, which is like, well, two, three, four for larger squares. And then for the origin, if your SVG is like going crazy where it like it ends up over here, but the origin's here, just go here to object to set the origin and then simply go origin to geometry. And then what you could do now when you scale it, it scales within the same place. In other ways, if you go set origin to 3D cursor, but first off you would have to move your actual guy like right there, like right here and then go and set object or origin to 3D cursor. That way now it's in the middle. But again, it's just all preference. So right now I'll just do Command Z and Command Z because I keep it right here for now because mine might end up in the night spot. And then all we need to do, since these are essentially curves, you can see we have this uh, collection over here with quite a few curves. And if you have a crazier SVG, it's gonna have way, way, way more curves. So basically this is the trick. So you click on this little curve option you go to geometry, and now here's the annoying part. If we want to make it thicker, we have to do extrude, right? But you see how it only it only shoots one piece at a time? And imagine you have like infinite pieces, right? And the trick is you go here, and I'm, I did 0.005, and 
and then I hold option or alt depending on your keyboard and then I'll click here and I press enter and now you can see everything is going up so I think 0 0.005 should be but see the problem is when you're holding option or alt it has like crazy characters so I type the number first let's do 0 0.05 hold option and or alt and then press enter and let's like 0 0.05 for my specific design it fits and now I can show you the thing I was talking about where this like overlap is showing. You know, it looks really weird. And ideally, if you have like extra shadows, you could delete those, but you would go into edit mode and then click on that part and then X and delete the vertices. And you can see like that. But the problem is this is like the entire piece. So I don't, this one doesn't have any shadows. So the trick I did was basically it is French fries and French fries are typically not exactly the same size as someone's um, container. So you can just do S and just scale it, and technically you could do SZ and scale it like this, and then let's see on the side. Size looks like it's already there. But yeah, slight scaling on the SZ as this little tiny thickness, and now, let me zoom out, you can see it's gone. So that's how essentially we have it already 3D within just a few minutes. And now all we need to do is let us select everything here. And if you have a very complex, um, SVG where you just don't want to select, you know, it'd be like lights and stuff in the way. Just go over to your collection, right click it, and then hit select objects. So now when I press G, I can see everything's like this. And now I can do R, X, 90, rotates at 90. And now we still have a little bit of issues right here. So you can see just these like tiny little things inside of the fries that I'm just not a big fan of. So again, since this is really a basically like the one part of the face, I can't just go in here and X delete it. Like it's just gonna look weird. So the trick that I did was one, I would go and check out the actual render view first and see if it's visible. And right now on EV, it's not gonna be visible, but first off, let's delete this light, press one or minus Y, and then do shift A, mesh, plane, scale this bad boy up. And then let's go ahead and let's do shift A, add some lighting really quick, area, G and Z, scale it up, change this, let's do like 300. And then for the actual uh, French fries, let's take this one out of the area light, put it into the collection here. Select these French fries, select the objects. And it looks like I have the plane in here too. Don't want that in there. Go out here select these objects and basically if you want to set the origin again you can go here set origin to geometry and then that way now if I go GX I can go like this move them right there and then basically now we can say set origin to 3 cursor so now you can see he's like right there and then basically put this light G Y and move it forward and then we can rotate it a little bit on the X, just like that for now. And what I wanna do is I want to tap into this plane, or not tab, click on it, tab in edit mode, select the edge select, click here, easy, bring this bad boy up, click on the edge select, and then you can do Command B or Control B, and then that adds a bevel, and then when you move your mouse to the right or left side, or essentially the right side, it moves like this, and then you just scroll up on your scroll wheel or even on your mouse pad on your laptop. Add a few cuts right here, boom, and then tab back out. And you might notice it's a little bit uh, jagged, so we made shade smooth, and then we can scale X just like this. So now if I press zero, we are in a camera view. So right now we have to do shift and then the left asterisk right next to the one on your keyboard, shift that left asterisk sign and then you can hold W, A, S or D to move this guy around. And if you hold shift while pressing, then it's easier to move around. And then you can put your, your guy like here, just like this. And then for the lighting, this one looks a little darker. So I'm gonna go new, click on this base color, bring this up, make it a little bit brighter. And then we can do shift A again, light area, GZ and move it up above the camera view, scale it up past the cameras. That way when we add in, let's try like 500. And then I can do G, Y, move it over here. And then 
this one, let's GUI this too, that way it's not in the actual lighting. And then press zero. And now click on this backlight, go to zero, and let's just scale it a little bit more and see how this looks. So GZ up a little bit. And again, just depending on your preference, what you wanna make. And if you wanna make this even bigger, you could technically click on uh, Fry, select objects, take out this area real quick, select the objects here, scale it down, G and Z up, just like this. And then what you can do is double R to rotate it whichever way you like. But the thing is first we wanna do is get rid of these overlaps. And just the simple way I did that is because fries aren't ideally the same size, then you would just scale it on the Y a little bit like this. Same thing here, scale it Y, make this one bigger. Scale Y in a little bit. Go back to one view and let me see. And it's much easier if you go into cycles because on EV it's really, you can't really tell too much. But now when you go to cycles, you can clearly see so now if I do scale Y like this, there we go, that one's gone. Scale Y here, little bits, and basically, yeah, this one looks fine. But basically now if I select the um, objects right here, double or rotate it, change the angle a little bit, that way that specific part isn't in the view. Now we can see what it currently looks like. And then if you don't like these reflections, go here to the roughness on the materials bring it up a little bit like that and then for this yellow again if you don't like this color delete it so now you can see it reverts back to plain and then basically change this to the actual color you like like that and then if you don't like those roughness because fries typically you know <laughs> they don't shine just like that and then pretty much what you could do is you, you can select basically all of these then select this one command L link materials and boom look at that you have all the materials now the color that you wanted it and now if you update it here they all update you want blue purple whatever color there you go and then let me just keep it right about here and then all you need to do is go over to your render engine now if you don't need cycles definitely change it up go here change the max samples i mean you can do 128 to the viewport but then 512 i think solid for this and then literally go here, render image up here, and then pretty much you're good. But also make sure that you do have it uh, set on the options right here, the file path name, PNG, and then you're pretty much set to go. So if this helps you, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.